Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Also, you can find us under that name on TuneIn.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Right now, let's talk about the reigning Olympic gold medalist in the super heavyweight division who has started his career 7-0 and with seven knockouts, and that is Anthony Joshua. Right now, Anthony Joshua looks great. He certainly is a physical specimen. He's 6'6", and he's muscle-bound. He recently fought Matt Skelton, and in that fight, he gets the knockout. Skelton goes down, barely beats the count, gets up at the count of, let's call it, nine and a half. Then it's apparent after Joshua comes in and throws a couple more punches that Skelton is not in any condition to continue. Needless to say, after the fight, Skelton was so blown out that he's talking about retirement. Right? But, let me say this. Let's go under the hood with Anthony Joshua. Now, everyone here knows I'm not a trainer. Right? I'm not a fighter. I haven't been a fighter. I'm just a gambler. So, you need to put my view in its proper perspective. Right? I'm just someone who's a casual fan watching fights. Trying to analyze fighters so I can hopefully make money on them someday by placing bets, right? So view this uh, from the seat of a gambler, right? If you go back and if you look at Anthony Joshua's Olympic performance, right? The one that got him the gold medal. He's in the final against Roberto Camarillo, right? Camarillo at that time was the reigning Olympic gold medalist in the super heavyweight division. Right, you're going to notice that Camarillo is right in front of Joshua. I mean, he's right in front of Joshua. You're going to also notice that that fight is this close. Right, Joshua wins the gold medal by this much in a highly subjective sport. Now, my point to you is boxing isn't bodybuilding. How a guy looks physically isn't necessarily how good the guy is in the ring. Let me also point out that I personally believe that for young guys, the most important things to learn are angles, right, where you are versus your opponent. Do you have the kind of game where you can figure out that if your opponent is right hand heavy and you're off to the opponent's left side at certain angles, that that opponent can't hit you with their Sunday punch? Right? Understand, it's on angles that fighters like Bernard Hopkins and Floyd Mayweather have built their legendary Hall of Fame careers, right? You see a B-hop and he looks like he's right in front of an opponent, but then you notice, wow, you know what? Babu Chumanov's going to have to come across his body. Then he's going to have to get through Hopkins' shoulder to land that punch on Hopkins' head. And, of course, Hopkins is moving away out of the picture as Shumanov winds up to throw it. You start to notice that there's a part of boxing that happens before the punch is even thrown, right? The great fighters use positioning to defense you, right? They use positioning to sometimes make your punch have to travel farther, sometimes to smother your punch, right? Look at Felix Trinidad trying to get off the left hook against Bernard Hopkins when they fought. Hopkins is up on him, 
Trinidad doesn't have the angles to hit Hopkins with the shots. So as I'm looking at Anthony Joshua, I'm looking for angles. I'm not looking for the kind of performance he put together against Roberto Camarillo. Right? Okay, he won that fight. But I'm less impressed by a guy who is standing right in front of his opponent than I am with a guy who knows how to be a little bit off at the side. A guy who sets it up where he knows if he's off at the side, he can still land certain punches. Floyd Mayweather's case, that left hook up front, right? He knows, too, that if he's off at the side, the punches can only come at certain angles and he can defense them at those angles. Right, let's just say as I see Anthony Joshua stand right in front of Matt Skelton and use youth and physical fitness to overpower him, let's just say I did not see the angles that would get me all excited. Right? No doubt, if this were a decathlon, Anthony Joshua can hang with the best of them. Right? He has little to any body fat. He's 6'6". Six, six, right? You see the athleticism. I see him moving his legs. He can move from point A to point B. Right? I see it. The problem is I don't see that he's figured it out. He's not using his legs to set up angles. His movement is back and forth, right? It's back here, then he's forward. I don't see him bouncing around side to side. Put another way, I don't see the method to the madness, right? At one point in the fight, he shows us a bit of a jab. Jab looks good. But let's just say I don't see him making that jab an issue. Like let's say a Larry Holmes would make it an issue. Or let's say a Vladimir Klitschko would make it an issue. You know against those guys the fight really doesn't start until you figure out a way to get by the jab. Right? A Larry Holmes would bludgeon you with that jab. Right? A Vladimir Klitschko in slow motion without really extending a lot of energy can win rounds just off that jab. In Anthony Joshua's case he throws the jab a few times but you don't really know what he's trying to accomplish at least I don't. Now, I understand I'm being hard here on a fighter who's only had seven fights. But what I want it, is the boxing public to look at him. I want other young fighters to look at their own films Think about what they're doing in the ring, and then compare and contrast it to the slick customers in the sport, right? The guys like Mayweather, the guys like Andre Ward, the guys like James DeGale, the guys like Bernard Hopkins, right? Because there's a difference, quite frankly, between those fighters and many of the others. So let's talk about it. Right To me, Anthony Joshua, in every film clip I've seen of him, is too right in front of his opponent. Now compare and contrast that to young guys who actually are working angles. I can tell you that if you go back, it's one of my favorite fights in history, and look at the first fight in which Floyd Mayweather picks up a title. His first opportunity at a title. And let me point out, Mayweather's so young, he cries in the ring afterwards. Right? Look at his fight against Hinato Hernandez. Now understand, Mayweather is very young. Joshua's 24. I believe Mayweather's younger than Joshua is right now during that fight. But I want you to listen to George Foreman, the heavyweight champ who we were blessed in boxing as fans to have him do color commentary because Foreman was excellent 
and you're going to hear Foreman talking about Mayweather's angles as the fight is happening. If you listen to Foreman's commentary on Mayweather's feet, and you see Mayweather working where he's always a little bit outside. He's always off at the side. He's making sure that he's the one with access to throw a left hand in certain situations. Right? He's never in front of Hinaro Hernandez, who understand was an elite fighter. I believe Hernandez only lost to two guys. You may know him. Oscar De La Hoya, who had great moments as a fighter. Right, the head honcho at Golden Boy, believe it or not, had a great career as a fighter before he became a promoter. Young people need to realize that. Oscar beat Hernando Hernandez. The only other guy to do so was Floyd Mayweather. Let me let you in on a secret too. You hear the press always rip these fighters. Right, you would think that Mike Tyson was Jack the Ripper. Right, that Floyd Mayweather is Ted Bundy. Just understand that after Hanaro Hernandez fell on hard times, right? Required hospitalization, right? Had an illness, the hospital drained his bank account. Understand that when he died, the person who quietly paid for his funeral was Floyd Mayweather, right? That's who Mayweather is. The point I'm making here, though, is that Mayweather, at a young age, younger than Anthony Joshua, was spending his time figuring out angles. Right? Worked it into his game. So by the time he had a title shot, he wasn't green. He was working angles. Right? He's always a little bit off at the side. He knows what to do. Apart from angles, the other thing I believe young guys need to figure out is pacing. Right? I'm telling you, once your pacing is put in stone, it's hard to change. I see some fighters right now wearing belts. Yes, I'm talking about Saul Alvarez, who quite frankly don't look to me like they can fight three minutes of every round. Right? They haven't figured out how to pace themselves. Right? And I'm just here to tell you that fighters fight at a certain speed. You need to figure out how to keep your game together at different speeds. Right? Because you might fight a fighter who would force you to fight faster than you normally do. You might tire out, lose the fight on a lack of stamina. Or, as you fight quickly, your defense might fall apart and your game then becomes an open book ready to be exploited. Now I'm looking at Anthony Joshua and let's just say Joshua likes to fight at a very steady rhythm. Right? You know, he doesn't like to get outside of his comfort zone. Well, guess what? Boxing is the discomfort business. What do you think the other guy's trying to do to you in the ring? He wants you to be uncomfortable. He wants you out of your comfort zone. I wonder what happens if Joshua gets outside of his comfort zone. Right, so let's just say Joshua looks to me like a guy who's had seven pro fights. I know people are buzzing in the fight community because, of course, all seven fights were won by KO. Right, but understand if you're given a choice between fighting a young green guy like this who's winning fights by physically overpowering opponents versus let's say a KG vet someone like a Tyson Fury a Carlos Taco who needs to be on everyone's radar in the heavyweight division a David Hay Right? Understand, Hay himself had pacing problems when he was younger. You remember Hay against Carl Thompson? Now Hay can close his eyes and go 12 rounds, right? Unless he's being relentlessly stalked by someone like Derek Chisora, who's willing to run red lights. 
right? I believe these KG vets are better bets in matches than a young green guy like Anthony Joshua. I mean, understand, the fights look great. They look dramatic when Joshua's opponent is right in front of him and when Joshua's opponent's in his mid-40s like Max Skelton was. Right? But the fight would look different if he's fighting a guy who's playing angles, who's using lateral movement, who has a method to the madness. Right? Because Joshua's not making his jab an issue. It's not like Klitschko. It's not like the other guy has to get by the jab or anything. Joshua is standing around, in my opinion, looking young and confused, right? A guy who can force Joshua to actually turn in a fight and who can shift the pacing of the fight would give Joshua all he can handle. So let's just say, if I were to hear that Anthony Joshua were fighting David Hay, I'd be racing to the casino to put money on David Hay. Understand, Hay, watch him. He moves around the ring. He's not standing in front of you thinking that he's going to just overpower you. Right? He's not. Also, with David Hay, I know I have a guy who went 12 rounds with Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Anthony Joshua, I'm telling you too, to all the Deontay Wilder people watching this video, do you really know how your guy would do in the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th rounds? Right? Understand, heavyweight history is replete with guys like George Foreman falling apart, young George Foreman, in the later rounds of fights. Yes, the guy in the early rounds looks dominant. Looks like he could knock down Joe Fraser several times. That's not the guy leaving his corner, let's say, at the start of the seventh round, is it? Right? Let me say this, too. Look at the very first round. Max Skelton. You know that Matt is going to try to come inside, don't you? Is that a secret? You know he's going to try to come inside. How does he get inside that easily against Anthony Joshua? He's not even bobbing and weaving his way inside. Just look at the very beginning of the fight. Then look at how Skelton is able to come in and tie up Anthony Joshua. Aren't you a little disturbed by that? Now let me throw out something that's going to sound ridiculous. Understand, life is not all about Olympic gold medals. right? I'll agree you have several elite Olympic gold medalists in the sport right now, right? Guillermo de Gundio is an Olympic gold medalist. Andre Ward is an Olympic gold medalist. Um, these guys are elite fighters. Make no mistake about it. I'm not here to diss Olympic gold medals. But at the end of the game, it's not... At the end of the day, it's not about your fame. It's about your game. I want people, if they're looking at young British heavyweights... So look at another heavyweight who's 6'6", who to me uses lateral movement and who right now, in my opinion, has one of the best jabs in the heavyweight division. And that's Yugi Fury. Let's just say, I know if this is a bodybuilding contest, if we're just judging muscles, certainly Anthony Joshua has the better looking muscles than Yugi Fury. But this is boxing. It's not you know, bodybuilding, right? I believe Yugi Fori right now has the better game. Now, I'll agree he has more pro experience. Understand, though, Fury is five years younger than Anthony Joshua. Five years. He's working on his game by working on angles and pacing. It's breathtaking to watch. Understand. While Fury has a great jab, and while Fury is 6'6", six, six, he's a tall guy, Fury is a withering body puncher who uses lateral movement. When you see a tall guy coming in and flashing body punching like this, without getting hit hard, 
and you see him able to dart around the ring. In other words, he not only has foot speed, he knows how to use it. Then that gets a wow. Let me also say this too, and I know Fury doesn't have an Olympic gold medal. Right? But at the end of the day, as I said before, it's not about your fame, it's about your game. Joshua looks a little bit stiff to me, body-wise. Yugi Fury bends at the waist and can bob. Put me among those, and I know it's controversial, and I know both guys are unbeaten. Put me among those who believes that if Anthony Joshua, who is highly regarded, fights y Yugi Fury. Understand, I would be in line trying to bet on Fury because I see more angles there and at the end of the day, really, at the elite level in the sport, from what I can tell, it's all about angles. Right? Anthony Joshua has his work cut out for him. If I were one of the people managing his career, I wouldn't have him in the area code of fighting a David Hay, a Tyson Fury, or a Derek Chisora right now. If he can't keep Matt Skelton from getting inside on him, how's he going to keep Derek Chisora from getting inside on him? Right? Chisora would be on his chest. Right? Let me say this. A Tyson Fury, think about it. A tall guy with reach. Fury would have a choice. He could beat him from the inside or the outside. Right? And on the inside, I want you to look at the clinches in this Matt Skelton Joshua fight. It's not like Joshua is getting the better of it on the clinches. Compare and contrast that to the clinches in the Tyson Fury Steve Cunningham fight. Right? So my point is simply this. Everyone looks rested at the beginning of a fight. Guys always look great at the beginning of their careers. Don't focus too much on the guy's record. Focus on the guy's skills. You got a bunch of guys in this sport. Juan Manuel Marquez, Orlando Salido, who lost some fights early. But yet you see them and you understand this guy is working on stuff that's going to help him later in his career. Right? Don't be blinded by gold medals and early knockout streaks. It doesn't mean that the guy has mastered the art of fighting inside, of using angles, or of pacing himself. I suspect if Yuri Fury were to fight Joshua, and if he were to increase the intensity of the fight, that's assuming Joshua was able to get by his jab, which may never happen. Right? Because I don't really see the head movement on Joshua. Right? Understand, when you're 6'6 six, six and you're muscle-bound, you're accustomed to hitting guys and having them fall down. You're not accustomed to dodging the bullets coming back. Right? But let's say Joshua gets past Yugi Fori's Jab. I believe Fury could be able to up the tempo of the fight in such a way that Joshua's defense would fall apart. Right? Not every fight is going to be fought at the measured pace at which you want it. Some opponents are going to force you to speed up and slow down. Right? Right now, in my opinion, Anthony Joshua is a very intriguing prospect. But he's a young guy. If he were to fight an experienced heavyweight, let's say Lucas Brown, I would expect Lucas Brown to take him out. Right? I would expect Tyson Fury to take him out. Right? I would expect David Hay to take him out. Dare I say, I would take the younger Yugi Fury against him. Anthony Joshua, in my opinion, has his work cut out for him. Don't just look at the highlights, look at the entire fight, right? Joshua looks great on highlights. Yes, Matt Skelton is done at the end of this fight. There's no question about it. Sadly for him, there's also a first round where Skelton seems to just get inside on demand. You need to pay attention to the first round as well. 
Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and let me point out, a fighter with only seven pro fights can clearly work on skills and up his game. All I'm saying to gamblers right now is don't be fooled by the highlights. If he signs to fight Tar uh, Carlos Tackham, you need to take Tackham. If he signs to fight Brian Jennings, you need to take Jennings. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And of course, I'm making this video in July of 2014, right? Obviously, as he learns skills, his game's going to develop. If he fights these guys in 2016, two years from now, just disregard this video, okay? This video is for Anthony Joshua, where he is right now in his career. Thanks for stopping by.